and welcome back friends to the moment of truth. I just finished up the water system in the adventure van. 21 gallons of hot and cold running water, hot water on demand with a rear shower and a sink up front. Let me pull you off the tripod here. I'll show you the system. I've got it uh, all hooked up. Everything's ready to go before I put the cabinet in uh, and hopefully everything's gonna work. So let me give you a quick walkthrough. So here it is in all of its glory. It actually looks a little more complicated than it is. Uh, let's just start at the beginning and you can see the source. So the source of the whole thing is the 21 gallon poly tank here. And this is uh, only, what was eight inches wide and 16 inches tall. And I think it was three feet long or something like that. Anyway, it came out to 21 gallons or so. Uh, so that has got four hose, four outlets on it. So this one right here, coming off the bottom, the 90 goes up, this is the supply. It goes to a, uh, a canister style filter right there. It's got a screen in it that will protect any, like if we needed to fill up from a stream or there's a little gravel or any contaminants in the water, that will catch it right there and not destroy the pump. Now I went with this clear hose on this section right here because I wanted to be able to toollessly remove the tank if I needed to work on it or maintenance. So that just spins off there with that wing nut. Whoops, comes up here. This is a, uh, uh, what's that? Three eighths, three eighths line, I think, or half. Five eighths, maybe five eighths, doesn't matter. Comes here to the uh, sure flow pump. This pl pump maintains the pressure, I think at about 60, 60 PSI or so. Goes in here, this is 12 volt, and this is hooked up to the switch. So I added a second switch. Of course, the first switch runs the LED lights. The one to the left here turns the pump on and off again right by the bed so if i forget to turn it off uh we can turn you know if it goes off in the middle of the night we can reach over and turn it turn it off uh, so from there uh the blue of course is the cold water side we come here to a t this one goes over and splits off goes through the cabinet reposition here through the cabinet there to a um to the stainless lines and up to the faucet with the little tiny bar sink. Bar sink has a drain in it that will, a two inch drain that will go down and drain into a gray water tank, which I've yet to install. I've just got it poked through the floor there. Uh, on this side, uh, the cold water runs over and splits again. And this, uh, this leg here goes to the outside shower, which is just a regular mixing valve that goes to the, to the nozzle there. There's an, also a T here, here's the cool part. This T goes down into the Rickson hydronic heater. So that cold water runs into that right there is a copper plated heat exchanger. And that's the cool part. So as it runs in there cold, it goes up and it comes out hot. And that's a gallon a minute on demand. No hot water tanks, no messing around. It will just flow and just run hot water continuously until we run out of water. Now the course if you want to see the, the uh, furnace that's the Rickson furnace which is uh, is a hot water boiler which runs through the other side that's a whole nother video so after it comes out through the heat exchanger here it comes out now it's hot so it splits again this feeds the hot water side to the outside shower and then goes up and supplies the hot water there to the sink and that is essentially the whole system. Here you can see this is the, the furnace. Um, a hot, it's a hot water furnace. So this is a fan just like you'd have in a car with a heater core in it. And that circulates there and that's how we will heat the van. So the, the Rickson, the hydronic heater does two things. It heats uh, water electrically. If we plug into shore power, uh, we can run, we, can, we don't have to worry about running the gas furnace. And it's a cool, cool system. Now I know there's gonna be the Sally's are going to come in and say, oh, you shouldn't have the water next to all the electrical. Uh, probably not. But uh, uh, you know what? Uh, it's, I, I, I had to have everything in the small area. You know, pri or space is really at a premium here. And it was my decision to make and I made it. So if a little water sprays on there, a hose leaks, you know, things happen. You know, you can't account for everything. So um, did the best I could uh, with the space that I had. So if you want to do yours differently, um, you are welcome to do that. But this is the way I did it. And... Um, I don't, I don't see any problems here. So here's the process. When Mrs. W wants hot water, uh, she's going to have to do a couple things. She'll have to turn on the pump right here, and then she'll have to turn on, arm, turn on the, the furnace, the, uh, the Rickson furnace. So you just turn the system on, hit that for hot water. That will circulate the pump, give it a minute or so, and then we will have on-demand hot water. So does it work?
Okay, there's four, full flow. Ouch, ow, ooh, ooh, that is really hot. That's actually, that's too hot. Here's the cold and the hot. So a pretty good amount of water right there. Man, that's gonna be so nice. Look at that. I've, I've always wanted a van with hot and cold running water in it. Just can't believe it. All right, let's check out the shower. How the shower works is it's just got, we've got one of these little coily hoses with a quick attach uh, rear connector with the mixing valve that will mount on the back of the box there, just like you would have in a, in a house shower. So when you want, what I think I'll do is when I, I'm, I'm gonna cut a little cubby hole in the back of the box here where I can store this little deal under there. So uh, this would be it co really come in handy. We go to the beach a lot, and especially when the kids and everyone, you know how it is having the salt water on you, just to be able to, to rinse off, or if you're out for a couple days, just to be able to wash your hair or um, wash the baby off after her morning, morning breakfast of sauerkraut. You wouldn't believe what Mrs. W feeds that child. Uh, to clean her off and her stickiness and all of that stuff, it's a million different things. I mean, just imagine a, after a hot dirt bike ride, if you're going to go for a two-day ride, you know, to crawl into bed when you're all sweaty and filthy like that, to be able to come out here and, and rinse off a little bit, to me, is worth, worth a lot. It was worth doing, I guess. So how this works is that this will just snap in here like this. And then you open your mixing valves here. And then we just have our sprayer. So, I mean, just like... It, all the ones we've seen, it's got your different choice options, but I'd imagine that this is gonna be the best one right here. That's a fair amount of water. I mean, you could definitely take a shower in that. It locks on, so what I think I'll do is, um, is I'll just build some sort of a little bracket up here that I can just hang this guy on here, and then you can just turn it on and you can get underneath of it and you can just go crazy, like a, like a bird in a bird bath. But that, uh, right there, with that, with that uh, S-Bar furnace running underneath, that is producing unlimited hot water, even at this rate. It's just super, super warm. It's perfect. This, actually, we're running it, I can see that there is a problem that that water up at the sink is coming out too hot, and I'm gonna have to uh, put in a mixing valve. I, the guys told me I was gonna need one, and I got to do it in the plumbing, and I thought, oh man, it, it, how, it can't be that hot. I mean, it, going through that heat exchanger can't possibly, um, produce that much hot water but it actually it's scalding hot so I ha I'm gonna have to redo the plumbing I'll put in a mixing valve I'll show you how that all works so I can dial in the temperature so that when one of the kids turns it on they don't burn their hands that's that's gonna be a problem it's uh, you know those little things sometimes it's easy to cut corners when you're doing these jobs and think well yeah I'll find a workaround or it may not be perfect but you know, I'll just tell everyone, you know, don't turn all the hot water on. You know, it just doesn't work out very good. You need to do it right. So I'm going to put that in uh, as soon as I turn off the camera. Uh, so at, to address a couple questions, so a lot of folks uh, asking, you know, why, why, why go to the, all the trouble and put all this stuff in a van? You know, why don't you just get a camper or just get an RV or a trailer or something like that? Well, I don't. I don't like to pull trailers, so I, I don't want to, I hate pulling trailers. I mean, we, we don't do normal camping like going to down the highway and pulling into rest stops or pulling into KOAs or things like that. We just don't do it. We don't camp in places that typically have hookups. Um, and to, we like to explore and we like, and that's the reason why that we have the four wheel drive, we'll be able to go in really remote isolated areas and up to high lakes and dragging a trailer up there. I mean, it's just, it's terrible. And sometimes you go down those roads and you can't turn around. No, no trailers for me. Uh, the other problem with that trailers and campers and stuff is the quality of everything. I mean, they are shoddy. They are the, they, they use particle board. They use the cheapest components, anything that they can hide. Yeah, they look kind of nice on the exterior when you're looking at them, but when you start digging into them, cheap wiring, cheap furnaces, cheap everything. Most of them are just garbage. To get something that is of quality, I mean, you're talking about huge money. These vans are really popular in this area, and to go buy one that's outfitted, you know, similar to what I'm gonna have here, is $150,000, and that's where they start, and then they go up from there, it's, it's crazy. So, I don't want a, a, a portable living room. I don't want, I want more of a, of a, of a toy box. I wanna be able to have uh, lots of room for our gear. I want to be able to have, of course, hot and cold running water in the four wheel drive and refrigerator and the basic stuff, but that's not the, I, I don't want this huge monstrosity of an RV and I don't want the, the low quality. Everything that I've put in here and everything I've done, less the four wheel drive, I, I've, 
I've done 100 percent myself. I know the systems. Um, I've chosen high quality uh, components, high quality wiring and pumps, the best you know that I can afford. I know how everything works. I've built everything. If I have a problem on the road, you know there's there, um, there's nothing that I sh wouldn't be able to fix. And I have the pride of doing it and just the joy of doing it exactly how I want it, not how someone else thinks it should be. And that's important because what our lifestyle is and how we like to travel and how we like to camp you know our family is is may not be the same as you so um that's that's why i decided to do it i i have um I, i'll put a lot of a lot of work into this and i have a i'm very proud of of what what we've accomplished so um if you want to have a camper or drag a trailer around go for it you know not everyone has the the time and and the ability to to build all their own systems you know and and i i I understand it's a little bit daunting and I was a little slow in getting started because it was a little intimidating because I didn't really understand all this stuff but you just got to get in and start doing it and most of the stuff I've done in here I've done about three times. This furnace here, the Rickson, I've had to move it three times until I finally got it in the right position. So uh, there is, a, a, there is a, a learning curve but the nice thing about it is if I ever did another one, man, I'd, I could do it in a probably a third the time. Um, uh, just from what I've learned from it. So I'll put in the mixing valve. Uh, I got to do the laminate and everything on the box and finish that all up, cut some vents in and stuff. And then I'll bring you back uh, with, with the whole thing installed and then we'll see how it works. I got to chase down a few leaks here too. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you guys on the next one.